Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this lecture, we are going to begin our study of the two Earth like planets in the solar system, or two that are at least most like Earth, and that would be Mars and Venus. So what do we know about these planets? Well, let's see what we'll start off with what we can see from Earth. Venus is the third brightest object in the sky and we see it here in the central part of this image. The next brightest object in the sky down below would be the moon or the full moon specifically. This is a thin crescent moon. And those would be the other of course the brightest object would be the sun. Now Venus also has phases which are visible through a small telescope and we can see those here. These are one of the things that were discovered by Galileo showing that Venus had to orbit our sun. So here we see the phases from a very small phase that is about half full up to a very close to new phase that we see here. Now Mars on the other hand is a little different. It has a distinct red color. It isn't near as bright as Venus, but it has a distinct red color that we can see here. And even through a small telescope, we can see these are some of the surface features. And here we see that we can see a little bit of lighter and darker areas on the surface of Mars. Best visible when it's at opposition and that's when it is opposite to the sun in the sky, making it at its closest to Earth and also making it high up in the nighttime sky when the sky is darkest so we can see the most detail. Now, looking at Mars, one of the things that often comes up is the idea of canals on Mars. Now this was actually started and the very first uh, reference to anything like this was in 1877 and that was Giovanni Schiaparelli who wrote of seeing Canali on Mars. Now as you might expect Canali which means channels in Italian was mistranslated as canal and you can certainly see why because it looks like canal and a canal and channel have a similar meaning but there is a very big difference between them. A channel is a natural occurrence. So a river channel or things like that would be something that would be completely natural. A canal means an artificial origin. We think of things like the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal that are man made. So things that are not that are not natural and that kind of gave the idea that maybe there was some kind of life on Mars as this became thought that there were canals on Mars. Maybe there was some kind of intelligent civilization on Mars. And this was championed by Percival Lowell. And he championed the idea of canals for a long time as regions and perhaps a way that some Martian civilization, dying civilization, was bringing water from the north and southern polar regions where water was frozen into the caps down to the warmer equatorial regions. So that was thought that maybe that would be the case. Now, of course, we know now that no canal, no such canals exist. It was really just an optical illusion that our minds want to put patterns. So when you start to see some things there, you'd start to see you would try to make yourself see patterns. However, in order to see any kind of canal, these things would have had to have been tremendous in size to be visible from Earth. Many large features on Mars are completely invisible from Earth, even under the best conditions. So to see a canal, even something a mile across would not be visible from Earth. So it was really just an optical illusion. What our minds do is try to put some kind of sense to random patterns. And since there are some random patterns and some and some different colorations there, our minds tried to put them there. And once one person sees something, then others start to see the same thing. But to be fair, nothing was ever photo. You could never photograph canals. And of course, once we visited Mars in the 1960s, we, our images showed that there were definitely no canals or in most cases, even channels, certainly nothing that can be seen from Earth. So let's look at some of the basic properties of these two planets. They are re relatively similar. Venus, almost a twin of Earth. If you look at the numbers here, it has a mass 
only a little bit less than Earth's. Its diameter is very close. Its density is very close. Its gravity is very close. Escape velocity is very close. Surface area is close. The things that are different are the rotational period, which are very different. Earth taking 24 hours or just under and Venus taking 243 days. We also notice the atmospheric pressures are very different. Earth's being one and Venus's being 90 times the density of Earth's atmosphere. And we will look at this a little bit more detail when we talk about Venus. Mars, on the other hand, is a lot smaller, about 10% of Earth's mass, about half of its diameter, a lot less dense. Gravity is lower, escape velocity is lower. However, the rotational period is almost the same. And that makes it convenient for a rover because a rover will then have days just like it would have on Earth and was able to recharge things like solar cells efficiently, something that would not happen on our moon. And essentially, no atmosphere, very, very thin atmosphere, uh, not near enough to even come close to being able to breathe. So we'll look at both of these in more detail in the coming lectures. This is just an overview to start out this lesson. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary and what we looked at. Mars and Venus are the two closest planets to Earth and the two that are probably most Earth-like in many ways. We talked about the canals on Mars, which never existed, and were really a combination of a mistranslation and an optical illusion. And then we looked at the different properties, how they have some each have some similarities to Earth, but they each have significant differences as well. So that concludes this lecture on Earth-like planets. We'll be back again next time for another topic in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.